um, it's easy to jump to conclusions. The, the problem is that how those people get there, you know, it's like they were somebody's son or brother or father at some point, and uh, they've, something's happened to them in their lives to, to lead them all the way. I mean, it's, you can't get any lower uh, than being on the street. Ken has lived in Massachusetts his whole life. While he doesn't want to spend his life on the streets, going into a shelter means giving up his kids, his pet dog and cat. His brother lives in government-funded housing, which gives Ken a place to shower, but it is illegal for his brother to have overnight guests. I'm, I'm over 60% of my life on the streets. And once you've spent that long, it, it's I look at the world in a different way than you do. And well, I know that anybody out here can just end up losing everything that they have and be out here instantly. And it almost not, not makes me not want to try to build up again because it can be taken away just too easily. The hardest thing I really think is when I do go to work and I get off work and I have to go and sit outside, you know, and I just got off work, I'd like to go to my house and unwind. You know, just never having any comfort. Do we focus on an immediate, addressing an immediate concern, which is where am I going to sleep tonight? Or do we focus on a larger issue, a more long-term, long-range issue of providing people with, say, education, or some of those resources I said that they were lacking, educational resources, um, uh, job training, job skills, uh, which will put them in a position so that they can get a job, maybe get more education, and, and, and get a place to live long term. I'm 50 years old. I have experience doing more things than a lot of people know even exist for work. But the best type of job that I could probably get would be a minimum wage, and that's not even enough to get a room nowadays. Minimum wage jobs, like I mentioned before, um, don't really meet the cost of living in most communities. Um, so, yeah, yes, one could uh, you know, lose their job and then go find a job uh, somewhere and uh, make minimum wage, but essentially they'll be still facing many of the same problems they did before they had a job in that they probably won't be able to meet all their needs. The struggle to find housing on a minimum wage income makes temporary shelters and housing programs a necessity. But with government priorities shifting to the war in Iraq and other programs, this temporary solution has been accepted by society as the primary solution for housing. Trying to find permanent housing, everyone here would like housing, but I hear this something like a one to two year waiting period which is pretty difficult. But right now, for me, being here is probably the best solution because it's warm and it's safe and it's this food. If you get evicted from your home and you, you can't get into some sort of subsidized housing program or, um, or don't have somewhere else to stay with family members or friends in, a, in an area, then um, you have very few options about where you're going to sleep. And uh, a lot of these sort of, uh, you, can go into, you can go into these housing shelters that often have a, uh, you know, they allow you to stay for a certain period of time and then you're, you're, you're turned back over to, um, you know, like uh, transitional housing programs. You're allowed to stay for 30 days or however long uh, the different programs allow you to stay. And as soon as you find yourself in that situation, I think people begin to realize that they do need to find a job or they do need to get some sort of uh, subsidized assistance to um, help them get back on their feet. Pete has been struggling for most of his life. He has had various addiction problems which have even led him to jail. His family members cannot help him because they too are barely getting by. It's like right now I literally have no income and I find that unless I'm drunk, dirty, beaten up, then people don't, it's, people generally don't give me money and it's, I don't, it's like I don't want to beg for it, you know what I mean? That's not my, I don't want to do it. It's short-sighted, I think, to try to do one or the other. It really needs to be a little bit of both. We need temporary housing for that reason. We need the temporary shelter so that people have somewhere to go in a snowstorm or, or someone to just sleep at night. Um, but they also need those skills. One of the things that um, poverty does is it, it takes away hope. 
And, and if you think about having a place to live and just think about how important that is to our society, to any society, if you don't have a place to live and you don't, and you can't figure out how you're going to get that place, then what kind of hope do you have?